In this lesson, we'll discuss Bonferroni's method for pairwise multiple comparisons. Before we start the question that I've prepared for you, let's discuss what this is. The Bonferroni method is a post hoc procedure conducted after an ANOVA test or Kruskal Wallace test whenever the null hypothesis has been rejected and have concluded a significant difference in at least two means. It is a pairwise comparison that distinguishes which groups are significantly different. Bonferroni uses confidence intervals to conclude a significant difference. The interval is calculated using the formula below, where we subtract the means between the groups that we're comparing, plus the margin of error. This factor B is the Z score at this specific probability. Now, depending on the size of your sample, this may be replaced with a T value. Keep that in mind if you see a version that's different than this. And this part, this factor G, is the number of pairwise comparisons of interest. Usually all pairwise comparisons are investigated. G is calculated using this formula and K represents the number of levels or treatments or whatever you are testing between the groups. That being said, the question reads, using the same example we used in our previous lesson, and in our previous lesson we actually performed the Kruskal Wallace test using this data. The Kruskal Wallace test is based on ranking the data from lowest to highest. And what we eventually found was the means of each treatment, and I wrote them down underneath here. You'll need this for the Bonferroni test. So based on the Kruskal Wallace test, we concluded that at least two treatment group means differed at 0.05 significance level. That's our alpha value. Use the Bonferroni method to calculate confidence intervals for all pairwise differences between the treatments. Use the 95% confidence to find out which ones are significantly different. Whenever you do this test, and depending on how large your data is, it's always a good idea to organize your work in a table. Notice I've started this table out for you, but you should do this on your own. The first column tells us the means being compared. We have to compare each of these treatments two at a time. For example, I need to compare treatment one and treatment two, treatment one and treatment three, treatment one and treatment four, treatment two and three, treatment two and four, and finally treatment three and treatment four. This covers all of them. So I'll rewrite this in each of these cells found in this table to organize my work. Now that I've written them down, let's calculate the difference of the means. In our case, the difference in the mean ranks. I will take 8.1 minus 13.9, 8.1 minus 4.9, 8.1 minus 15.1, and you get the idea. I'll fill that in right here. Now that we filled in this column, we will concentrate on finding the margin of error. The margin of error is pretty large. Let's begin with factor B. Factor B is a z-score, and this z-score has the following probability, which we calculate in here. So we'll focus on that, 1 minus 0 0.05 over 2 times g, and g is 4 bracket 4 minus 1, k represents the number of treatments in this case, over 2. 4 times 3 over 2 is 6. Let's place this into our calculator and get the probability. 1 minus 0 0.05, and let's put that in brackets because we are dealing with a fraction, divided by 12. We get 0 0.9958. 0 0.9958. So what z-score will ensure a 99.58% probability? We'll need a table. My z-score table looks like this, and I need to find 0 0.9958 in this collection of numbers. 0 0.9958 appears to be between these two values. So that is 2.63 in between these two. So I'll write down 2.635. 2.635 will ensure this probability, and that is my z value, or my b value in this case. This will get multiplied to the square root 
of everything inside here. N represents the number of observations, and if we take a look, we have a five by four chart, so there are 20. 20 bracket 21 over 12. And the little n represents the number of observations in each treatment. They're five apiece, but they may be different in your samples. It depends on how many you collected. One over five plus one over five. This actually makes the test for us a little easier because we don't have to calculate a new margin of error each time. Now it turns out if you calculate this correctly on your calculator, you should end up with the square root of 14. And then I'll multiply that value to b. So the square root of 14 times 2.635, we get 9.859. So me is 9.859, approximately that, that's good enough. Just to be clear, this represents the margin of error for every comparison we make because the n values were the same. We're going to take the differences, whatever these values equal to, and plus minus them with the margin of error to get our confidence interval. Let's go ahead and find these differences for simplicity's sake. We'll take 8.1 minus 13.9 and that is equal to negative five decimal eight plus minus the ME value of 9.859. We'll do the exact same thing for the others. As you see, I've combined the differences for each of the treatments and I'm going to now add and subtract the margin of error for each of these. And I will get a confidence interval with a lower and upper bound. And I'll write that down in this next column. In case you're confused, I'm taking negative 5.8, adding it to 9.859. That is 4.059, 4.059, that's the upper bound. And I'll be taking the exact same difference and subtracting it, where I get negative 15.659. So this is our confidence interval, and this is exactly what the question is expecting us to calculate for each of these treatments that we're comparing. Here's what the rest look like. By finding this, we just answered the first part of this question, which is to get the confidence intervals. The next part is to see which of these are significantly different. And for that, what you do is you take each of these means and you take their absolute. This is important, bear with me here. If the absolute of these values are greater than the margin of error, then there's a significant difference. Of course, you will need to create a hypothesis for each of these treatments. Let me show you the hypothesis for the first one and you can use the same pattern for the others. We have the null hypothesis being that the mean of the ranks for the first treatment is equal to the mean of the ranks of the second treatment. The alternative is that they're not equal, so they're significantly different. Another way to represent the null hypothesis is by writing it out as the mean of the ranks of one minus the mean of the ranks of group two is equal to zero. And this is why we subtracted the mean ranks of the second group with the first. Now going back to what I said, if the absolute of the differences is greater than the margin of error, then there's a significant difference. And we reject the null in favor of the alternative. Let's go ahead and figure this out. The absolute of negative 5.8 is 5.8, and that is not greater than 9.859. So we do not reject the null hypothesis. Going through all of these, I'm not gonna go ahead and rewrite this five more times, but 
If we go through this one, 3.2 is not greater than 9.859. Neither is positive 7, neither is 9, neither is 1.2, but 10.2 is greater than 9.859. This means that if we were to have written the hypothesis for this treatment, let me go ahead and do that for you. We were comparing 3 and 4 we would have to reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative because the difference was larger than the margin of error. So only treatments three and four are significantly different from each other. And there is no significant difference for the other five comparisons. And there you have it. That is how to perform the Bonferroni's method for pairwise multiple comparisons.